Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Meg. And this is Gare Can Get It. This week, Horny Macbeth Redux? I don't... Why does he keep making (laughs) Macbeth horny? I didn't think it was a horny play. If they gave awards for makeouts on screen or stage, this guy would get a lifetime achievement. He'll find any excuse to get right to suck and face you all. Like, it's been a while. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's this been a while is, since I've seen it. But, like, wh- why, sir? Yeah. I mean, I'm not this against feels it. Like but... the, this is like the dumb American reboot of um, Slings and Arrows. It kind of does feel like that. I. It's Macbeth. There's a ghost who tells the director what to do. I made the connection that it felt sort of like Slings and Arrows, but not as good. But it, I didn't. I didn't put together that, like... Yeah. Both of them have ghosts telling people what to do <laughs> and like <laughs> kind of puppeteering the entire show or entire well, yes. one one's a show and one's a movie, but like yeah, I just I feel like I don't get the point of this movie. Not that like I don't understand it. That's hypercube. I don't understand hypercube. This is just right. sort of like, yeah. why did we feel the need to make this? I'm I'm okay with it. Like I'm not like traumatized like like Ikway. <laughs> I'm just sort of like <laughs> why? It was um, but all right. It was, it was like, okay. It was fine. So we're talking about a movie called The Scottish Play. It's from 2020. Gare plays a character called Hugh Painter because all of his characters have H names, I just realized. <laughs> Why? It's not Henry. It's Hugh. Yeah. But like, yeah. didn't he play another H named character at some point? I feel like I associate him Grady. with the letter H now. He what? He's been Grady a couple times. Grady a couple times. Yeah. Henry Breedlove. Hugh. <laughs> Henry Breedlove. Uh, <laughs> that name is just so like this ingrained is like in my heart. Renta, Renta Henry Breedlove. That's yes. what this feels like. Yeah. 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 We want slings and arrows, but like cheaper and worse. Can you do that? And Gary's like, sure, man. <laughs> You're paying for it. He's like, I don't know. Will there be sandwiches? <laughs> then I will then I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> you got your man. So like to to yada yada the plot, which is it's so it's like so bare bones. But essentially the movie focuses on this lady named Sydney Levis, and she's I guess she like started out as a Shakespearean actress and then became kind of big in like TV and movies, but she hasn't been doing stuff for a while. And now she's like, I need money in to get out of New York City. So there's a Shakespeare festival. They need a Lady Macbeth. I have resting Lady Macbeth face. Like, let's do this. It's fine. I've got this. Yeah. 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 So she meets with the, so she's in her, she says at the end of the movie, I think she's like 42 or 44. She's early 40s. She meets with the director um, of the play who's in his 20s. It's, it's gonna get weird. He's in his twenties, yeah. but um, he's he's like very. No, he's thirty two. Is he thirty two? He's 32. Okay, he's mm-hmm. emotionally twenties. I guess it's still yeah, it doesn't get less weird. It's yeah, because not- when they're like, "Should we fuck?" They announce their ages. She's like, "I'm forty four and he goes, "I'm thirty <laughs> two." That is true. That is true. Because he like, yeah. if he had said, uh, "I'm actually in college right now, and this is like, I'm getting extra credit for my theater classes," I would have believed him because he has a very boyish like. He I'm does, new to the earth. Yeah. Look about him. About him, he's got. He's like um, young, young, um, skinny white guy with like that tussled hair that we seem to have on all like relatable male characters from the year like yeah. 2004 through like now. He's got the now. big, the big black serious glasses. Um, <laughs> like he just, <laughs> he just feels like I like like he's the most earnest character. He's like ta-da, like here I am. So yeah. he's like, let me tell you, like, let me tell you, like, my vision for Macbeth. He's like, I don't want to do, you know, everyone has, like, their version of Macbeth, like, Macbeth in space or, like, Macbeth, but all the characters are pine trees. <laughs> he's like, no, that's not my version. He's like, my version. Ready? My version is, like, Macbeth. And she's like, okay, just <laughs> just shut the hell up. Like, are you going to pay me in money? <laughs> cool. When do I go? Yeah, and I was she like, goes, I'm only, I'm only here to see if you are actively dislikable. And he's like, am I? And she's like, not yet. <laughs> and then me in the, the audience, interview. I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like, ah. you should maybe ask a couple more questions because he's not actively dislikable. He's just actively like too much. <laughs> I feel like yeah. in this, I feel like in this movie, we get um, a bunch of characters that 
are so barely sketched in that I don't recall their names, like all the other actors yeah. in in Macbeth. Um, like there there are scenes where these guys talk. At, like as themselves, and then obviously like talk as the characters in Macbeth. I couldn't. I could maybe tell you the name of the character in Macbeth they play, like for the three seconds that you see them. I don't know their yeah. real names. I don't know anything about them. Like their relationship with the other actor. I don't like. They just kind of like pop in and they're like, "What up?" It's it's actually not a two person play in Macbeth, <laughs> and then they like disappear into the darkness. So like, there's like that. And then, like, all the other characters are just so fucking much. And I'm like, okay, you're just, you're, you're giving me more than, I just, I need you to calm down. Like, I'm just, I'm tired watching you and I don't understand. But anyways, so Sydney is sort of like, she feels like she's, like, she's emotionally smoking in every scene. She doesn't, like, actually smoke cigarettes, but she just feels like, like, ennui, <laughs> the person. Like, I'm just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mini shout out for to tired. John Kapalos' CD about where he sings about ennui, like, a lot. Like, a great, a great deal of songs about ennui. <laughs> She's just tired, disaffected Hollywood actress who just wants to get back to the theater. <sighs> Jeez, Meg. I... <laughs> She is a sigh as a person. Like I just <laughs> and like I like I want to like it, but like so the movie the movie starts with her in her um I, I don't know if it's like a brownstone walk up, but it's like it's where she lives in New York at any rate, because like you don't see the outside, you just kind of see like her bedroom. And she like gets up, her alarm goes up, she sits on the edge of her bed and like stares blankly at a window for like <laughs> real time <laughs> in the movie. And I was just like Oh, you're going to kill yourself? Like, is that how this... Nope. She's just, she's just real depressed. uh, I don't, I don't know that the movie solves that except with maybe young man Dick. Is that, is that the moral of the story? Like if you feel real sad. Only, only kind of. Cause they're like, should we fuck? And she's like, how about next time we meet, you take me to dinner. I mean, there's like, there's like an implied future fucking that's going to happen. I mean, that's, you know, she's got something to look forward to. It's like, why don't we shoot our shot and see if this turns into romance? It's not like, maybe we should just, we're here. We're we're already in the same Airbnb. I mean. It felt like that's what the movie wanted to do. And then, and then they were like, well, he's, he looks like an actual, an actual baby. (laughs) He looks like a fetus with glasses. (laughs) It would be weird maybe for the audience. So let's just have them like shake hands and know that in the future fucking will, will go commence. All right, end of movie. Like, I just yeah. Okay, I yeah, this movie. So she's she's disaffected. He's like world shipper. They go to this town in Massachusetts that's basically the Stratford Festival, but America. So it's a town that's like all about all about Shakespeare. They um they are gonna start doing Macbeth and uh Rachel. Who who do you think they have to play Macbeth in this? Uh, uh oh um. <laughs> Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, wait, I know. Carolyn yeah. Davies. They're yeah. like, we should probably get a down on his luck theater actor who's known for his over the top Shakespearean performances and we'll call him hey, you, you, not Henry. <laughs> um, and then we'll make him Macbeth. It'll be totally original. Nobody's done this before. <laughs> Nobody's ever. What if we had Gare play um, a- an actor, a sort of pompous actor who is who was a bigger star like 30 years ago and then um sort of has disappeared from the main from the you know the the pop culture scene um and is really full of himself and loves women and loves alcohol um and he plays mm. Macbeth he's like very good at being the serious Macbeth but the second he's off stage he's just like a slobbery horny mess could we get Garrett Wynn Davies to play this role <laughs> Like, sir, <laughs> so you have one character and you do it so well that people just keep hiring you. Like, it's very specific. It's not even typecast anymore. It's like, it's like, it's like one guy. Like you're playing. It's yeah. Like, it's like Henry Breedlove was like, well, I can't work in Canada anymore because of the lawsuits. So I'll just go across the border and change my name to Hugh Painter and no one will ever know who's going to keep track of a middle-aged Shakespearean actor. It's the perfect crime. <laughs> like, it's so weird. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> but I fucking I love it like this. OK, so this movie supports my theory that the more characteristics, the more meh the movie is. But like he's making yeah. it fun for us. He knew that we were going right, to come right. by later. He's playing bingo with himself, I think is yeah. how you described it. Yeah. He's yes. just making it fun for himself. Yeah, it's exactly. What yeah. And, and now us. So 
she so Sydney shows up at her um, bed and breakfast, and there's like some discussion that oh, like thirty years ago when I was first starting out, I stayed in this exact same bed and breakfast because I guess they've been doing the Shakespeare Festival for like long enough that she was able to like start her career and I guess now not end her career, but like come back to her Shakespearean roots here. So she shows up at the Airbnb or the B and B. She's unpacking her stuff, and you hear like the the bounding footsteps of a middle aged drunken chick at like nine a.m. <laughs> Her off stage, and then her look. She's like, "No," because <laughs> you hear him all, like from all, like s- stage right. He's like Sydney. And she yeah, goes, he's he's oh, like dun 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 dun. I was like, yeah. <laughs> more of this, more of this, but the movie. Like I'm, I'm here for this. So he shows up. The first thing he does is like pick her up and spin her around the room. Um. He is dressed in my notes. I wrote he is dressed like rich guy who woke up drunk, and I feel like that's probably <laughs> that's the vibe. That's, that's kind of the vibe. The yeah, vibe. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. nine a.m. Um, I'm I'm rich and I'm fancy and I'm definitely still hammered from last night, which did not end. Yeah. Last night is continuing till now. So he picks her up. He spins around. He's like, "Why are you here? Did Hollywood chew you up and spit you out?" And I was like, "Okay, I, now I know exactly what this character is. Thank you, sir. One line. I got you. I'm here." He goes, um, you look delicious. And like, I know that that's not the characteristic of people calling him pretty, but I'm going to say a corollary yeah. to him being called pretty is him uh, calling people pretty and also his weird <laughs> thing with food. So I'm going to say this is like this. This is like two halves that makes one whole characteristic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he makes an actual nom noise when he goes to kiss <laughs> her cheeks. He goes, hump, hump. <laughs> that's my favorite part. I, okay. So can I just say, okay. So I was like... I was like taking notes, like obviously, like while I'm watching, just of like things, things that happen. And so I'm like, okay. So he picks her up, he spins her around. He's like, "You look really great." Um, he's like, "Do you do you have a new lover? Do you have a new haircut? Do you have a new facelift? Like, you look different somehow. How? Do, like, why do you look different?" And I'm like, yeah. "Okay, you're just you are the most obnoxious. I got it." Um, he touches her face. He's like, "I'm gonna go out to buy booze," and I'm like, "You are hitting every single characteristic. <laughs> like, do they give you like were they like 20 seconds as many characteristics as you can?" And he's like, "You guys, no, go." This is the game that I play with myself every crappy movie I'm in. I am, I am here. <laughs> I got this shit. I got this down. So um, the, we've got the touching. We've got the weird comments. We've got the delicious. We've got the, um, I'm going to go get drunk right the fuck now. <laughs> yeah. And then in my notes, I literally wrote, he says, good to see you. He kisses her cheek. And I'm like, all right, actually, we got the touching. We got the kissing. And I wrote, he makes nom nom noise. And then when I was reading it, like right before <laughs> we came back like to record, I was like, I don't remember that. I, he must have, because I wouldn't have written down nom nom noise unless a nom nom noise <laughs> happened. So thank you for saying that, because in my head I was like, okay, I didn't just like black out and go somewhere weird in my no, brain. No, no, like, he, he goes, how, how? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Sir, you're not actually playing a vampire in this. I will still need to eat a human woman. I don't, is that, is that cool? Like, I will have to incorporate that into the script at some at some point. I, <laughs> I need to yeah, mash on they were, It's really like they were like, you're at an 11, we need you at a 15. And he was like, okay. <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to say that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you want, did you want the full GWD? I, I can bring that. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think no, I got it. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to turn this down for you. Did you, did you want this all the way? I can turn this all, not the, all way the way up, but just like yeah, your hair up. will be blown back. Watch out. <laughs> This movie knew that it was just like weird, pretentious trash and was like, what if we just throw Gary in, but horny, <laughs> just to lighten the mood a little bit. And like, yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, so that's how we meet Gare. We have a bunch of pretentious conversations that like, I, I will discuss with you after we get through the basic plot, because they just made me roll my eyes a bunch. But essentially, they go, they start trying to rehearse the play. Um, and all of a sudden, like in the back of the of the auditorium, there's like a hooded figure that points at them and is like, "Don't let the play suck." And they're like, "Okay, the thanks hooded <laughs> mysterious figure. Let's not inquire into this any further." Actually, I was like, okay. what it says. Yeah, it's not even like a paraphrase. No. It's like, "Don't put on a bad play." And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> Because he just got done being like, there's no curse. It's not real. Statistically, that kind of stuff happens to all Shakespeare plays. And the whole time, Gare is sitting there with this look, like this smarmy ass look like, mm-hmm, uh-huh. 
And I can't tell. I feel like it's both perfect for the character and also it's Garrett when Davey's going, all right, two more scenes and then lunch and then three more scenes and then I get to go home and never have to deal with this fucking piece of shit ever again. <laughs> like it is it is equally the character and Gare doing the eyebrow raise to the audience. Work with me, guys. We're going to get through this moment together. So Yeah. But yeah, you're right. They They have this whole discussion and like – I feel like I know that the stereotype of actors is like, oh, they're they're very like flighty and very like, I don't know, they're they're more like spiritually in tune, like emotional hippies and whatever, whatever. But I feel like if I'm if I'm in a play and the director's like, uh, I know that we're about to like discuss like blocking and like the actual like mechanics of like how we're going to be doing things and like how how you want to like approach like the production of this play and you're spending 20 minutes going now let's discuss the history of curses i'd be like you're wasting my fucking time like what, yeah. what are we doing here what what is this like if if i'm the kind of person that is so afraid of the curse of macbeth i'm not starring in fucking macbeth do you know what i mean like i'm not right yeah i'm here i'm not going to be acting play if i'm afraid that like the someone's going to murder me I'm going to star in like my little pony the musical i'm not going to i'm not right. going to be part of this project so i just it was like yeah. I I feel like a lot of this movie, I can't tell if the movie is right there with the characters and their level of earnestness or if the movie is like one step removed and looking at them with kind of a raised eyebrow. Because sometimes it's hard. It's hard to tell. Like the whole movie for me is hard to tell. Like, what is your point? Like where? That was for the audience. If you were coming into this and you didn't know Macbeth was a cursed play, you would be like, oh, that's what this is about. I guess. But then why are you going to then why are you like even watching a movie called The Scottish play i feel like for garrett win davies i that's yeah, well, okay if you're a garrett win davies fan and you don't know anything about shakespeare are you a garrett win davies fan are you truly one of his chosen few <laughs> <laughs> maybe you only know him from forever night i don't know <laughs> yeah that's that's fair i don't know that he ever like sits yeah. down and mentions macbeth during the course of him biting necks in forever night yeah i don't think he gets any shakespeare moments in forever night no wonder it only went three seasons they should have let him turn go loose yeah we needed season four where it's just the whole thing is a flashback to him, like hanging yeah. out with Shakespeare. He gets some sword fighting, like when all he gets all of his buddies, like he sword fights with Colm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything is like Shakespeare adjacent, but I don't. I. I mean, I guess there's not any actual like Shakespeare scenes. He's surprisingly comfortable in trunk hose. I mean, it's it's pretty much all all we get. <laughs> Oh, they give him the worst trunk hose in that, like, in that, I know we're, we're off topic, but like, I just keep thinking of the, the <laughs> wedding scene where they're like, what if we yeah. give him trunk hose and it's the poofiest trunk hose that anyone has ever, like, he could hide like six pumpkins in his pants and he would never, he would not know. Just, <laughs> anyways, anyways, yeah, okay, back to this piece of shit. Um, just watch Forever Night instead. This is, this movie is dumb. But yeah, so they talk yeah. about their, yeah, they introduce for, you're, you're right, you're entirely right. They introduce for the audience's sake. Hey, the, there's a there's a concern that the Macbeth play is cursed. Blah blah fucking blah. This it's not actually cursed. And then uh, the ghost shows up and points at them as like suckless, and then like disappears. <laughs> um, and then like essentially, two things end up happening. Right? You've got um, like cursed type actions that occur. So like part of the ceiling nearly beans Gare in the head while he's doing he's doing like a Macbeth monologue. It's him alone on stage, and part of the ceiling just crashes down right next to his face. Um, and then we've got uh, he's he has to do a he's practicing a different monologue on a different day, and all of a sudden his voice gives out, and he has to do like he's supposed he's doing like I lost my voice voice, but it sort of sounds like squeaky teen voice. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like okay. That's it. That's an audible choice you made. That's he's fine. Like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. hang on i've got this <laughs> and then when he goes in the audience yeah they give him like the biggest scarf i've ever seen in my entire life that they wrap around his neck and he's like i just need to sip some tea with lemon and also some whiskey <laughs> I'm like, well that'll i mean that that's good throat coat i guess sir it's All a right, hot sure. toddy it's a it's yeah hot gear and his hot toddy so um we've got the ceiling that comes in we've got the the losing his voice there's a stained glass window that they're borrowing from I think a library or something in town. They're borrowing a stained glass window from someplace in town. Yeah. It gets smashed by a ladder um, that drops when a guy is on it. So the guy is like clinging onto a beam in the ceiling with his little legs wiggling around because the ladder has fallen out from under him. And then as this is going on, the like there's a, an electrical fire that happens in the building. Um, and then this one actress who's in the play starts having like a nosebleed. Like it's just a whole bunch of like 
mini nightmare shit that all goes on. But like, it's yeah. all small enough that like nothing is actually nobody is hurt. Nobody is nothing is actually damaged. But it's a lot of like tiny little fuck you things. And then we find out that the reason all these things are happening is because the ghost of William Shakespeare. You heard me right. The ghost of William Shakespeare <laughs> um, is sort of pissed about Macbeth. He's like, it's not my best work. And everyone knows it, like knows me for it. And they're they're playing it all the time. And it's like not a good play. And I'm not happy with yeah. it. And like, what if I wrote some notes? <laughs> he's like, he's like, um, I have like a slightly edited version of the entire script. And like, what if you guys did this? And then I don't keep haunting you forever yeah what about that he, do, he does he basically presents all this to sydney who very quickly is like on board with this shit I feel immediately like, she's like oh my god you're shakespeare and he's like yeah and she's like totally there i feel like there's no or almost no hesitation on her part of being of like believing this at all and that's like well before you will see a scene of him like ghost walking through a wall like like dematerializing through a wall yeah well before he does any actual ghosty shit she's like oh you said that you're william shakespeare and you're talking at me in rhyming couplets i'm on board i believe you and i was like miss i okay like yeah like all right. yeah to the point where she like goes into a building and is looking for him like when she meets him out in the garden i was like okay maybe you're having fun with crazy guy in the garden and he's just charming and interesting and whatever but then she like goes in a building and she's alone in a room with him yeah and i was like you don't know if this man is actually the ghost of william shakespeare or if he is mentally unstable and you are now alone at night in the middle of the night with him in a building in this empty building yeah where you didn't tell anybody you were going yeah it did feel like that very first scene i was um, like oh is she playing along is she like oh i bet the director like set this up because they, they all kind of when the ghost shows up in the auditorium and he's wearing the robe and he points they're all like oh haha director you're so funny so I was like, okay, is she still in that mindset? But like any any thought that I had that she was playing along, yeah, is, is almost immediately dispelled. And she's just like, nope, you're a ghost. I'm I'm on board. I believe you, sir. And I was like, the fuck? Like, okay. And the fact that she's like, I believe that he's a ghost, but I think as a ghost, he's hanging out in this abandoned building. I was like, but don't ghosts kind of hang out everywhere? Like anywhere? Like on account <laughs> of being ghost? Like she's like, he's a ghost. Yeah. That's clearly his apartment. And I was like, what? What is happening? But yeah, so she's like a light. He must be over there. Only ghosts turn on lights and windows. Yeah, he's a ghost. Does he? Do they need lights? Is that like part <laughs> of ghost lore? I'm not aware of that. They're like afraid of the dark. Like I just, I it was. It's very weird. Like all of this. Like I said, all the characters are so earnest that like they're just they're like on board. The most believable response is from the director because she will go to the director with these like pages, which nice touch are written on like tea stained pages <laughs> do you know what I mean like yeah like I like that like yes. Shakespeare's ghost he doesn't have a laptop he doesn't have a computer no he is writing this on like 1600 era vellum in the other yes. realm and I was like fuck it sure fuck it sure why not so she takes this pile of papers that are bound up with a beautiful ribbon and she goes to the director and she's like here and he's like haha what's this and she's like the ghost of Shakespeare visited me and wants you to do this version of Macbeth and he's like uh-huh are you insane like did you meet a random like insane homeless guy who's also like a very good Shakespeare scholar like is that is that what happened oh my god how did you know and she gets mad at him she's like no it's the ghost of Shakespeare I was like uh, okay but then he like he also seems like he gets on board really quickly although he does require meeting the ghost of Shakespeare in his bedroom at yeah, night. And Can then, you imagine you wake up yeah. and there's your crazy lead actress and like a man you've never seen before wearing like an open <laughs> flowy puffy shirt who then walks through a fucking wall? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not directing this play anymore. I'm going to the nunnery. I'm just, <laughs> my life yeah. in the theater is over. But he's like, huh. Okay. Um, sure. Like he had read it and was like, oh, this is good, but this is not Shakespeare. I like I came here to do Macbeth, not your your weird like art project version of Macbeth. So we're gonna do my like the real Macbeth. And then he gets visited by the ghost, and he's like, "Well, if the ghost of Shakespeare wants me to do his weird avant garde, not at all Shakespeare play, guess I'll do it." Yeah, I'm like you. Okay, I just like you're part of the Shakespeare festival. Everyone has paid to come and see Macbeth. You said that you were doing Macbeth, and then they sit down in their chairs, and you're like, Macbeth, but with totally different words and a different ending and a different story, and it's, like, not the same play. Like, ta-da. Like, how is that going to go? <laughs> how is that going to – there's, like, 
There's got to be like <laughs> some guy in like management, like, uh, this is not what we paid you for. The fuck? And your response is yeah. going to be what? The ghost of Shakespeare told me this is cool? <laughs> like, like what? I just, I can't, I feel like with most things, I can suspend a little bit of disbelief. But in this, like, m- the level of disbelief I'm willing to suspend for a ghost is very high. But like somehow the responses of everybody else to the ghost make so little sense that like I can't be in that world yeah. with them. Like they just seem so weird. But so they end up putting on Shakespeare's version of the play, like the new the new version. And people in the audience are like confused. But then of course they like immediately jump on board and they love it. Um, Gare gets to do a couple of, like, you get to see some of the rewritten scenes, which of course includes another Gare monologue. <laughs> and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, all right, I get why this actor is is here for it. And then we end the movie with um, the the director and the Sydney character talking, and Sydney's like, oh, that hot young actress really wanted you, and he's he's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want that. I actually want you. And you see Gare walk away with the hot young 20 something. And I was like, correct. <laughs> that is how that goes. <laughs> to the victor go the spoils. Thumbs up. <laughs> Good job. I like how like it has no bearing on the plot. Like there's nothing like wait, up to this point, he he's obnoxious, but only in like I'm a grandiose Shakespearean actor and I was really big in yeah. 1978. He's like obnoxious in that way. Like like benignly obnoxious and there's nothing i mean like it's both the kind of character where it's perfect that he's hitting on the 20 something actress ingenue and also like there's been nothing that said like he's like a sex predator or he's like on the prowl do you know what i mean like there's been like but like it's well she calls him a knave yeah well she calls him a knave yeah. and i keep i keep going back to that moment where i'm like do we do we get enough to like support that because i feel like a knave is not really worse than what he is yeah do you mean like he's just sort of benignly yeah. like he's just big. He's just he's just bigger than than life. Like that he's just sort of like a lot. And like he doesn't deserve to be hit in the head with like the ceiling cuz he's a lot. He's just like he's that actor where like the second you're in front of him you're the whole world and if he turns his head slightly it's like you never existed. Like that's who this right. character is. It's, yeah, yeah. The the larger than life actor guy. Yeah. 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 Henry Breedlove. So like her calling him a knave feels like, I mean, and maybe I'm like, I'm reading more into the, like maybe knave is meant to be like such a mild insult of like boyishness and like, cause he is, yeah. he is, he is boyish. He's like, I'm 60, but I remember when I was hot and 30. So like, I'm just going to continue to mentally be hot and 30 and like live my life that way, which good for you, sir. Good. I support this. I mean, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Do what you do what you love, right? Um, but it sort of feels like like she makes a character judgment about his character. And I'm like, well, he's just kind of he's not like he's just kind of like big and goofy. Like you don't have any like she's like annoyed by him, but I'm sort of like, why? Because he doesn't even do anything that should be annoying to her. The worst thing that happens is he's like, they sit in the audience at one point while other actors are rehearsing, and he's like, Macbeth actually is not a very good play. I don't think it's a very good play. Like, like there are characters who disappear for big chunks. Like there are like main characters who die like well before the ending of the play. Like the characters who do survive are really barely sketched in. Like he's making like yeah. decent criticisms. He's not like it sucks because I'm not in it or yeah. the language is dumb or there should be there should be you know more of me or something. Like he's making criticisms that sound like fair. And she's like, no, don't say that. And like, you know, she's like freaking out because she thinks the ghost of Shakespeare is going to murder him. But it's like that's <laughs> like there's that. And then there's there's a scene where he's at a bar and he's like, hey, hey, fearless director, um, you should make a speech. You should make a toast before we like start on this endeavor. And he's like, uh, I, okay. And he like makes a little, the director makes a little speech. And afterwards, Sydney's like, oh, like Gare's character did that to like put you on the on the spot and to like embarrass you and make you feel bad. And I'm like, maybe, but like the way he presents it when he's like, you should make a toast because we're starting on this big thing together. And like, you should make like a little speech to like get yeah. us onto this journey. It doesn't feel like a mean spirited thing, but her character is like, no, he's doing it to be, to like try and like do a dick measuring contest with you. And I'm like, like, yeah. Like it just, it's uh, like, I think it's just supposed to be like, um, vetting the director, like making yeah, sure the but director it doesn't feel, is... it, it doesn't feel like mean spirited, but her, her description, her description of him always feels more mean spirited than the action. And I can't tell if it's like, it sort of feels like the, the movie wants you to agree with her. The movie wants you to like yeah. be in the same place as her. So then I'm like, okay, could you show me stuff that supports what she's saying? Could you like help me? Like if that's, if I'm supposed to see him as like this bad could you show me that could you show that yeah. to me could you show him being bad to me 
Can we have more Garrettwin Davies, please? <laughs> that is my my main complaint about this movie. Can he be the main? Can he be the main person? Like, if you're going to create this larger than life character, I'm going to need more of him. Yeah. Although, I mean, I, this movie's not terrible. I liked the guy who played Shakespeare. I thought he was really cool. Can I just tell you something? I fully believed that that actor was English. He is not English. He is American. Did you know that? No. He did he, a really I, good job. He like, did an he amazing had a lot job. of really hard lines to deliver and he did a really yeah. good job. He did he did a really good job um for like what is such a bizarre and annoying role cuz he he will literally yeah. speak in iambic pentameter the entire time and after he does that like six times Sydney is like why are you talking like that? Yeah, they didn't talk like that then. But like yeah. no human person like naturally talks in rhyme. And he's like, I've been dead 400 years and I want to talk how I want to talk. Like, just don't Fuck worry about you, it. it. Shut up. Yeah. yeah. It feels like the it feels <laughs> like the end of Forever Night, that one scene where um they're like, wait, how did how did Divya come back from the dead with her head chopped mm-hmm. off? And Nigel's character's like, don't worry about it. Just fucking yada yada. Go in the yeah, next page of your yeah. script. Not important. Not important. <laughs> he goes, I don't know. And then they just move on. He goes, but it's not important, so let's move on. Like, it literally <laughs> says, but it's not important, so we just need to move on. Like, but yeah. it is important. We need to know how she came back, but it's fine. Um, I thought this was, we had a lot of really cute moments. He gets to hold court every time they're in the bar, which was very Henry Breedlove of him. They're all surrounding yeah. him, and he's just talking, and they're all, like, looking at him while he's talking. Yeah. And um, then he gets to continue doing that at dinners at – because he's staying at the same bed and breakfast that Sydney is – so they keep yeah. showing dinner scenes where it's the the landlord, the landlord's wife, Sydney, and Gare. And Gare's at the head of the table, of course, with a yes. full glass of white wine every time. Like going, <laughs> going through like it, like exactly like you said, he's holding, he's holding court. He's going through it like every yeah. story, and he's just enthralling everybody. And I'm like, well, I mean, do I think that this was scripted, or do I think that they just like filmed them actually having yeah. dinner, like? Maybe. Yes. Maybe. He gets referred to as the Hugh Painter experience because there's a part where the director asks her, how are you enjoying the Hugh Painter experience? And she's like, it's okay. <laughs> That's what I should have called our second gathering, yeah. the Hugh Painter experience. <laughs> yes, the, the GWD experience. And there's a part where he's like, oh, this reminds me of my, like, my bank woe in 1978. And the director's like, well, I wasn't going to call out your age, but like you did it for me. Because yeah, he's yeah. trying to say, like, I did it better. And he's like, yeah, but that was, like, way back in 1978. Yeah. And then he gets to say, like, well, I'm hopeless and old-fashioned, but then all the best things are. <laughs> he does get to compliment himself, which feels like which feels like the sister characteristic of I am so pretty. Thank you. But, yeah, New yeah. York, that, um, that um, 1978 line, I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was good because he he's at the bar or he was at the bar. Um, after one of these rehearsals. And apparently he just started like reciting the Queen Mab speech, I think. Yeah. Yeah. As, get, Mercutio's uh, Queen Mab speech from Romeo and Juliet. Because that's what you do. You get drunk at the bar and you just impress everyone yeah. with how good your your Shakespeare recall is. That's fine. So he does that. And then the next day he's like, oh, hey, director, we missed you. You missed me uh, being amazing. And that's a real bummer for you because uh, I'm great. I'm so good. And I was drunk <laughs> and I made me better. And, and, the dire- and he's like, oh, hey, you missed my Mercutio. And the director's like, oh, you mean in 1978? And I was like, oh, burn. Burn. <laughs> oh, oh. It like, was a good one. I like um, – how all the I like how all the Garrels end up having like <laughs> a bunch of like little dicks. At him. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just I find that so funny. Where they're like, what if we like, what if we made you have a character that was like you, but a cartoon, and like fifty percent of it is just you getting to do whatever you want, and the other fifty percent is us mercilessly skewering you for doing whatever the fuck you want. And he's like, yeah. but the first fifty yes. percent is me doing whatever I want. <laughs> I'm signing on. I'm into this. <laughs> the best moment, hands down, for for the like little dig, is when he threatens to replace him with Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kenneth Branagh. Yeah, and he's like, <gasps> you. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, oh, that felt personal. <laughs> it did, yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Branagh does feel like the slightly more famous, admittedly, like a lot more famous. Like, if you can't, if you, if you couldn't get Kenneth Branagh, like Gare would do a really, really good job. But like, you would maybe want Kenneth Branagh. Okay? 
that's why it was such a good like oh. yeah no it's yeah it feels it feels it feels uh like a, like it's like it hit the heart it hit the target yeah <laughs> it feels, yeah it feels accurate yeah the best character in this entire movie though is the asian stage director <laughs> <laughs> i i will say that any movie with a put upon late 30s asian woman is like it gets an extra point for me i don't know i don't know why that's yeah, my new favorite no, it was good yeah, when she's all upset because they're going to change the play and there's two weeks until it premieres. And he's like, listen, I'm so sorry. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I live for shit shows like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then Shakespeare shows up. Yeah, Shakespeare shows up and she's like, sup? And he goes, hey. And then she's like, who are you? And he's like, uh, William Shakespeare. And she's like, oh, hi. Like, <laughs> She is the only uh, character where her responses like feel genuine. Like I'm yeah. mad about this. Like I'm the one who has to run this, this idiot circus. I'm mad about you changing a bunch of stuff, but I also am like really into pulling like everyone's ass out of the fire and looking amazing. Yeah. So like the fact that this is a shit show gives me a chance to shine. I'm super into it. And I give so few shits about the actual interpersonal nonsense horse shit that's going on that when the ghost of Shakespeare comes up, I'm just like, okay, fine. Just don't touch any of the buttons. I could not care less. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like you, that being your response to the ghost of William Shakespeare feels right. Like no one else's response yeah. to the ghost makes any sense to me, but her being like, all right, just don't touch the fucking buttons, ghost. I'm like, all right, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, so I don't know. Like, I, I just don't know how I feel about like the overall, like what was the point of this, of this movie? Because like they go, they do the play, they do it Better than actual Macbeth, apparently, which I have, like, this feels related to my Murdoch Mysteries complaints. Do you know what I mean? Like, what if we yeah. take a real thing and we we retcon it so that we we make our version as better than the real thing? And it's so much better that uh, the ghost of William Shakespeare pops up and thinks that this is better than what he actually wrote. Because I'm like, oh, right. But we only okay. get, like, five minutes of rewritten dialogue. Yeah. It's like, we've rewritten this whole play, and then they're like, here's two lines that Gare delivers at the end. You're yeah, welcome. Gare gets to be a ghost. Isn't that neat? I'm like, I mean, Just maybe. know that it, this version was better. We're not going to show you this version. Yeah. Just know it was better. I think the whole point was just to be like, the thing that is cursing the play is not witches. It's not all the things that everybody thinks it is. It's because Shakespeare's unhappy that his shitty, that this work that is not representative of his overall quality is one of his more popular plays. So it's Shakespeare who's the curse. It's like the big reveal. And I guess my response to that is like, I just, I'm like, yeah, I know. Cause okay. it just feels like, uh. I feel like I have heard like complaints about Macbeth before, like not being like the most structurally sound play. Like the things like they have Gare say in the audience are things that I've heard people say about Macbeth before. So like, yeah, criticize, like, I'm not like, no, don't criticize Shakespeare. No, fucking criticize Shakespeare all day long. I love it. I love criticizing Shakespeare. But like, it feels weird when the response to that is when it's not like, let's criticize it. It's let's rewrite the entire play from Shakespeare's work. Like, it feels different from, you remember when we went to Stratfest last year and uh, Much Ado About Nothing, they changed some of the lines in the ending. So it was yeah. um, a little less sexist. Yeah. Like the overall, like the, there's characters that are sexist but then you get the female character getting to have like a clap back to them like a like a modern a modern response to this 400 year old play i was like i i like that and that feels different to me than this whole play is bad we're going to rewrite the whole thing but we're not saying that we're geniuses we're saying shakespeare's ghost wrote a new version and it was so amazing that everyone in the audience like creamed in their pants and died because yeah. it was so amazing this version of shakespeare so that better. we wrote and we're not even going to give you the whole thing because your brains would explode we're going to give you 20 seconds of gear wearing an entirely white outfit yeah we're gonna we're gonna dress yeah. him all in white as a as a handsome man goes he's gonna get to say some words and like that's all the shakespeare that's all the new shakespeare that you can handle because if we gave you any more you would just die with the magnificence of it and i'm like mm. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like this feels just like Murdoch Mysteries where they're like, oh no, Murdoch invented airplanes and shit well before. <laughs> like, mm. Mm. Okay. I just I don't and like I don't super care about the Sydney character because she's like bummed out and then she kind of gets her groove back. Like at the end of the movie, there's this really weird scene where Shakespeare's like, you should definitely hit that. And she's like, he's my director. And she's he's like, eh, like, not anymore. And I'm like, well, he Yeah. 
also he's like 10 years younger than you and you guys have talked like three times in this movie and have no sexual chemistry and like i don't like i'm like uh, eh? like what do you and it's weird yeah. that shakespeare's like you should definitely hit that and then shakespeare makes out with her and he's like to keep me like warm in the grave basically <laughs> it was like, yeah what am i watching what kind of a weird threesome movie is this like what <laughs> is it the ghost of shakespeare this 40 year old shakespearean actress with resting Macbeth face and then like the the the, the like peppy the peppy young director and they're all gonna like have yeah. a threesome see like what yeah. what is this what well shakespeare watches it's, it's so weird. It's so it's like you should definitely hit on that guy. Nom nom. And I'm like, what? But what do you, sir? What do you? I yeah. Now that Macbeth is fixed, he gets to die. Like he gets to move on. I so this movie. Okay, so I'm glad that you said that because I have so many questions about this movie's conception of the afterlife. This movie's conception of the afterlife is deeply confusing to me because it sounds like he's aware of what's going on in the earthly realm. Like he sees things. He obviously sees things because he's like mad that everyone's putting on Macbeth over and over again. He's like, ah, oh, I hate it. But like also he's like in a weird gray realm without color or sight or touch or like he's, I don't know. It sounds sort of like when, like, it's like if you, it's like Beetlejuice. If I, if you say his name three times, then he can like see you and be aware of you. Yeah. But otherwise he's just, sort of in this liminal state where he's not quite alive and not quite dead and everything around him is gray and miserable. It's weird to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like I'm a ghost. I'm always a, alive and awake. And like, I see these things. And like, once I have finished my journey to fix Macbeth, then I get to like forever die. Or then I get to like go to heaven. Cause I'm in some kind of like liminal, like um, limbo state. Go be in the mist. Yeah, I, yeah, but this is sort of like he's conscious, but but in a weird, non-existing, like gray ghost yeah. state. Uh, like he's th they describe it both as like as like he's conscious and also like he's just he's like in a weird waking coma. It sounds off. It sounds nightmarish. It sounds yeah. like the worst thing I've ever heard of. And he doesn't seem to like. It's not like heaven where there's like people that he's hanging out with it's just him alone as a sort of consciousness in a void without shape or sound or color but sometimes yeah. like the knowledge of a bad Macbeth production like hits him in the head I'm just like <laughs> this is horrible this is the worst like no wonder he's like I need to kiss a I need to kiss a lady so I have like some positive feeling that I can hold yeah. on to in this eternal hellscape that I'm forced to exist in while everyone keeps making bad productions of Macbeth forever. Yeah. Nightmarish. He's like he's like there will be darkness, but at least there will be rest. And you're like I don't under oh, you know what? Fine. It's so Just it's it's like the rest okay. of this movie where it's like it's so underwritten and then they then they'll say something where you're like, "Wait, can you can you expound on that one thing that you just said that's so horrifying that it'll keep me awake for the rest of my fucking life? <laughs> this yeah. weird nightmare version of what happens after you die that happens even to Shakespeare. Like, could you maybe like expound on that? And the movie's like, fuck you, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Suck less. Suck less. <laughs> that, is, that is my review of this movie. My review of this movie is me in a full body cloak Pointing at an empty stage and whispering, suck less. That's, suck less. Yeah. Suck less. I just. Yeah, this was. I'm, I don't know. This was five raised eyebrows out of five. He didn't get a lot of characteristics, but he got to. Well, he got a lot of them, but the ones he got, he got to smash out of the park. So. He, yeah. He yeah. he did. This does feel like the, uh, the bonus round of characteristics where they were like, you yeah. have 20 seconds. Do as many character characteristics as you possibly can. He's like, I'm on it. Bam, 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 bam. Like, <laughs> I'm going to touch yeah. a lady. I'm going to kiss a lady. And we're going to talk about um, who's beautiful. We're going to talk about Shakespeare. I'm going to yeah. um, talk about I'll alcohol. <laughs> actual eating noises when I kiss somebody. <laughs> which will be the entire lower half of their face. So exactly what I like. I'm not going to be told I'm pretty, but everyone's going to acknowledge how horny I am. And yeah. I like uh, that, and, too. And that I'm the greatest Shakespearean <laughs> actor ever because I've been doing this since 1978. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the movie, I will take a young a child bride. I will. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will and choose a young woman Hulk. and she will have to go with me. You can film it or not, man. <laughs> I'm taking my prize. <laughs> he gets to uh, hold court, like be the center of attention. Yeah. In, in a the, bar, in just like movie. Henry Breedlove. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, he got to revisit his Henry Breed love days. But as like elder, I'm chilled out. And now I'm just here to fuck Henry Breed love. Like I did Shakespeare and now everybody knows I can do Shakespeare. So now I just do Shakespeare for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I keep going back to like, it is such a, like the character itself is like, is the characteristic. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like, I'm going to play me, but heightened and horny and Shakespeare um and there will be alcohol and you can film that shit if you want guys you just tell me what name you're gonna call me and i will look over there when i hear that name all right okay cool i will have this one eyebrow raised the entire time because we all know this is bullshit you know it's bullshit i know it's bullshit that eyebrow it's not coming down i'm gonna kill a bunch (laughs) of ladies they may not be expecting it (laughs) i may actually (laughs) chew on people's faces that's just a characteristic (laughs) that i do i throw that in for free (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I will blow your fucking minds off when uh, you let me do some Shakespeare, which in this movie called The Scottish Play is surprisingly little. <laughs> it's like not yes. very much. <laughs> but when I do it, it'll be so false to the wall amazing. I do like I do like that they always have him do the scene with Lady Macbeth where she's talking about um, uh, be like look like the flower, but be the serpent under it. Yeah, I can't. I can't see that scene now without thinking about Henry Breedlove and that poor actress, <laughs> that poor lady, like being like having to recite those lines into Gare's dick zone. Like, it just, like <laughs> hold it together, hold, hold. <laughs> oh my god! And like they're all, I feel like, you know, when you see like an actor that you really like, like you've seen them like on stage, and you know that they're a very talented actor, and then you see them like in a movie like 30 years later and they're playing the like father or grandfather of the main character. And they're in something like, I don't know, like Bobby Sue goes to space and you're like, Oh, like you, you were, you were like King Lear. And now you're, and now you're like relegated to, to like, like a crappy role and a crappy thing. And you feel sort of bummed out. This movie sort of makes me feel that way. Cause like when they let the actors do Shakespeare, they're all very talented Shakespearean actors. Like they are all, yeah. Like they are all great. The Sid- the actress who plays Sydney, like amazing, amazing when she does her Lady Macbeth. Like Gare, obviously Gare does a Gare. He like blows everyone out of the park. It's great, right? But then when they have to do all the other scenes, it feels like like a schlocky like garbage movie. And I'm like, oh, can we go back to like letting you shine and do the? I mean, like as yeah. much fun as it is for me to watch you uh, get shit faced and hold court and have everyone tell you how great you are, like. Could we just could we just have the greatness scenes instead of you being like, oh no, a hunk of ceiling nearly hit me in the head. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh oh, spaghettios, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. I I just, I mean, it's it's fine. It's not like offensive. It's not. I mean, it's like sort of offensive in the whole. What it's if we wrote right. Macbeth better than Shakespeare did? That's like that's like mildly presumptuous. It felt like the Lifetime Network version of Slings and Arrows. That's all. Yeah. Well, and I just like at the end of it, like I have questions that like I don't care about, but like my main question is, are we supposed to see the director character as like pretentious? Because I don't think we are supposed to see him as pretentious. I think we're supposed to see him as like relatable and down to earth and he just wants to do a really good job. But like it's his first yeah. time directing and he just he wants to be great at it. But then like focused you, and artistic. Fo- yeah. But then you hit yeah. <laughs> But you hear the words coming out of his mouth and I'm like, sir, you're just a lot. Like I just – like the – like he's not pretentious but every word that comes out of his mouth is so – is so fucking pretentious that it's like – it's hard for me to like – and to like that character and root for that character. And then the Sydney character is just – she's like kind of grumpy and depressed but like with no real personality and then she immediately like accepts a ghost as real – and it's like, well, I guess I'll do what the ghost wants so he doesn't hurt people. But, like, the ghost is like, yeah, I'm not going to actually hurt anybody. I just want to scare people. I'm not, like, an evil ghost. I'm just sort of an annoying ghost. And I'm like, eh. yeah. <laughs> like, I just. <sighs> He's like, I, I just make it mildly unpleasant. I'm not going to make it actually dangerous at any Yeah, point. I'm just, I'm like, I, like, what? It feels like. I hate to say, like, my response to this movie is just, what's the point? But, like, I just keep going back to, like, well, what's. What's the point? Like the point. fixing yeah. Macbeth isn't the point. Like the Shakespeare character being like sad and in some kind of weird gray hell isn't really the point. The director and Sydney getting their rocks off isn't the point. The director learning to be a director isn't the point because presumably there will not be a ghost 
trying to fix every fucking play he does. So this will hopefully be a one-off experience for him. Like, is it to get Sydney back into Shakespeare? Like, uh, not really. Is it to get Sydney like excited about her career to get her money? Like, to, like, I don't like there's the other actors who play the other, um, some of the other male leads in the play. We find out in the very last like minute and a half that they're a gay couple. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. But I don't well, know their happens. names even. I don't remember okay. their names. Like Mark, oh, oh. they're like really generic because they get names like once. And it's when they're going to rewrite the play because it dramatically cuts their parts. And they're like, are you going to be okay with this? And they're like, yeah. I mean, if Shakespeare wrote it, then yeah, we they're have all to like do immediately it. on board. Like, well, the, oh, the ghost of Shakespeare? Well, the ghost of Shakespeare, yeah. I mean, who, who am I? Yeah, who am I? Gotta... I'm like, okay. <laughs> I just, like... Like, even with Hypercube, like, the point is stupid sci-fi. Like, the, the point the point is not the plot of that. The point is, like, uh, we just want to do weird shit in a weird lit-up box and have Gare wear a lot of watches. Like, okay. But, like, for this, I just... I feel like I, I feel nothing about it. Like, I feel like I yeah. like that they let him do all his characteristics. But, like I said, I think the more characteristics, the worse the end product ends up being. And I'm like, eh? Like... Thank you for um, giving me like the speed trial version of characteristics, I guess. But like overall, I just I don't I'm. Uh. Yeah, it was OK. I it like was... the guy who played the Shakespeare's ghost. I kinda yeah, liked... he was very talented. Like, yeah, he all did. Their, uh, yeah. All his scenes were great. Everything else was like, OK. That's so although funny. like as a real human woman following this man who's only speaking in rhyming couplets into an abandoned building in yeah, Massachusetts that would never happen. seems like a very bad idea, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe she's got yeah. a secret death wish that you and I both missed. And she's like, whatever, she this is, is how I die. I, and it's supposed to be her like realizing she's not old. That 44 isn't the end of her romantic life. But like also in the same movie, you have Gare who's at least 60 fucking around with everybody. So I'm like, hmm. is this, I mean... Yeah. Look, if the question is, can you fuck well into your 60s, exhibit A. Like, I think, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, Have you looked at Hugh Painter lately? I know, but she's like, I'll never fall in love. I'm already 44. I'm, it's basically over. You're like, okay. I mean, fine. But then Shakespeare teaches her how to love again. So I, I guess. But like, it's so, it feels so like, like mushed in it feels so like shoved yeah, in it's not the point it's not the point but like it would have been interesting i guess if they were like yeah if she's like oh i'm in my 40s because she has she's a very pretty actress but when i say she has resting lady macbeth face she has resting lady macbeth face i mean she is yeah she's not she's not a bitch character but like her, her she has rest like that's her face her face is very yeah. like severe so like to let her have like, like a love story. Like I don't super love a romance, but like sure, like give give me that. Like give me like she, give me like Lady Macbeth f gets her groove back. Give me give me that. Yeah. Give me you know. But this <laughs> and this feels back. like it wants to be that because like they the first time she talks with the young director, like he's asking her questions like, are you single? Are you married? At, like they're they're having that discussion. Are you gay? Are you gay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are they having like they're having that discussion and then it's like a whole bunch of other stuff happens. A whole bunch of other stuff happens and then it's it's like oh it's weird when directors hit on their actors and like correct. Correct that's a power imbalance. We don't like that. Correct. Let's not do yeah. that. And he's like, "Well, I'm I'm off to like I mean, I've just I've told you guys how to do the play, so I guess my directing job is over." And I'm like, "Is that how that works? You just you like get through all rehearsals and then you're like, peace out, guys. And you just like <laughs> fly away into the night. Is that – It does in this movie. I was misinformed, I guess, about how directing works. I kind of thought you stuck with it. But I guess you just, I don't know, light your script on fire and then just like back out of the room, throw in the bird, throw in the double bird. So he's like, I'm not technically your director anymore. And she's like, oh, I guess that means we can fuck. And he's like, indeed it does. Maybe we should. And I'm like, uh, will will you? And they're they're like, well – it's let's no we're not actually gonna we're gonna think about it real hard let's get dinner in two weeks okay I'm, I'm like oh like what like she made out she had a makeout scene with shakespeare and she has like doesn't she mildly kiss the director don't they have like one chaste kiss did i imagine that yeah they head? do they do because he's sitting there reading that book and she goes in, and that's when he's like i'm 32 and she goes i'm she goes i'm 44 and he goes and i'm 32 like 
we're both <laughs> not in our 20s. Baby. Yeah. And then she kisses him and then she's like, okay, you can take me to dinner. I'll allow that. It's just you're like, it's okay. So, it's, it's like nice. I'm hoping that uh, love is not dead at the age of 44 because I will jump off a cliff. But like, I just like, it's so, it's like you said, it's like not the point. And I'm like, okay, I know all the things that are not the point. Could someone point me in the direction of the point? Tell me what the point is. Like, I don't like what. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I even, I looked up reviews of this movie and they're all like, just generally like vaguely positive. And I guess I feel vaguely, I just feel sort of neutral about it. Like, I don't hate it. Yeah. I I so, watched it a couple of times now, like for this, and then like when I when I first got it, like it's it's fine. I just sort of feel like I I don't like what am I supposed to get from this? Like what? Yeah, it was good. It was a good way to pass like a cup was it like an hour and forty five minutes or something. It was yeah, all no, right. it's a it's a speedy. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Movie. It's just sort yeah. of like eh. it, was, it was fine. It was kind of like a, one of those Lifetime Network movies where you watch it. And you know you're never, ever going to watch it again, but you know it's going to end happy, and you're just yeah. going to watch a thing that ends happy. Yeah. And then you're going like, to I'm happy for the I'm happy for the characteristics. I mean, we got the first scene where he, like, matches as many in as he can, and then we have a bunch of him um, drunk and holding court, and then we end the movie with him getting uh, a young <laughs> young woman as his prize. So I'm like, well, that feels like yeah. the correct arc for a gear character. I'm here for that. I support it that. Yeah. I and I like how the young woman is hitting on the the young director the entire time and then she like he doesn't respond. He's not like brushing her off, he's just not responding. And at the end she's like, Well, I know who will never reject me. Yeah. <laughs> and Gary's like, Hello. You're lost. <laughs> 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 A man with experience. Right this way, yeah. my lady. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so you gave it five out of five because of the the quantity of characteristics i yeah. rate quantity it on and quality. overall <laughs> absolutely absolutely the quality of yes. the characteristics yeah. yes i unfortunately yes. um have the worst rating system which is rating it on the quality of the movie so out of 10 <laughs> who could have known this would be such a struggle <laughs> it's such a fucking struggle because like no i mean it, well it absolutely is because like i feel like with characteristics you can just be like here's how many there were out of like the proportion of the movie and you get like a good sense of like characteristic rating and i'm just like i don't know how do i feel about this and for a lot of his movies yeah. i'm like eh. <laughs> i really like gare i like his performance i like i like his acting i just he's in a lot of schlock tastic schlock <laughs> so i feel like this is not the word this is like a solid five it's a solid five it's like yeah. not i think that's i don't hate middle it middle of the road yeah i don't hate it yeah. i don't love it i feel sort of confused by it i'm like annoyed that they thought that they would do macbeth better than macbeth but it's not like i feel like there are certain times when i'm watching murdoch when i'm like actively angry i'm like you are actively like taking away accomplishments from people that have made those accomplishments but in this it's just sort of like what if we did shakespeare but i don't know better than shakespeare because we're so smart we're great i'm like uh, it's dumb but you also let gare come in and uh gare at us and I appreciate that you knew what you were hiring him for. <laughs> I appreciate that you guys were on the same page as to what kind of character we needed. So, like, thank you for that. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like if you want this, if you want this and you have the time, watch Slings and Arrows. I guess if you want, if you want to, like, watch a Gare does horny Shakespeare performance and, you, and you're on, like, a time crunch. Then sure, buy the Scottish play and like fast forward to those Gary moments. <laughs> and like probably about 20 minutes, 20 minutes solid, you will get the yeah. full gear experience. If you're like, if you're, you know, you need you need like a little quick hit. But if you want like yeah. a slow simmering gear does horny Shakespeare experience, I would I would say um, you know, watch watch Slings and Arrows. That's only like yeah. what, five episodes, six episodes. And it's you get to many. see him storm around and cuss, which is my favorite thing. When he's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh yeah, when he's, when he's wearing his little socks in his bathrobe, I just I don't know yes. why Gare marching around and swearing is the funniest thing. Because he like he never swears. He doesn't. He swears in Slings and Arrows, and he swears in um in Hypercube. And I feel like he doesn't swear very much in other things. So like when he swears, yeah. I'm always like, oh sir, oh you said a bad Ooh, word, sir. Really bad today. Ooh, he must have his goatee <laughs> <laughs> or a tie or a tie or a tie or a tie. Yeah. Or a tie. His, the two international symbols of evil: the goatee and the necklace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my You're god wrong i look i am a at this point i think both of us are 
um, trained experts in the art of picking out a characteristic. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're trained. We're honed. We've honed our skills. <laughs> Finally honed <laughs> our sharpened skills. Yeah. So I don't. This is like it's not awful. It's just kind of meh. I guess that's my end. Res- that's my end review of this whole movie. Okay. Uh, Meh. Eh. Although the guy who played Shakespeare, Suck he less. just won a Tony. <laughs> Suck less, yeah. He just won a Tony. Oh, he did. Well, he yeah. Really, I'm. Yeah. He's, okay. He's, yeah. He's, no, I, I knowing get that. nothing about the play that he's in. Um, just that, like, I know it's a play, not a musical. That's pretty much all I know. Um, knowing nothing about that, and only having seen him act in this, I fully believe that he deserved whatever Tony he got because he was very good. He was like very, very, very good in this. Like, it just better than. I think maybe that's another characteristic. Actors who are um, better than the project that they're in. <laughs> yeah, Actors yeah. who are much better yes. than the project they're in. That's... And he had to act through some serious guy liner. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true. Yeah. It's not Yannick yeah. Masson, All Natural. Those were, that was definitely painted on this, this poor man's yeah. face. So, yeah. I guess, yeah. My end, my end feeling on this is meh and suck less. So. Um, there will probably be a slight hiatus in the episodes of this podcast because Rachel, uh, next week in our time, and I don't know what, what time frame it'll be in the podcast, but next week for us, we will be together in Stratford, Ontario for the Strat Fest so we can watch ah, Gare Live in a play. What? So excited. This is what this whole podcast has been about. We have been honing honing our um gear exposure <laughs> we have been overdosing we've been on prepping on for this we've been prepping for this so either mm-hmm. either so we will get to we will get to see how successful we have been so either we will show up at um at gear's play at london assurance and we will be able to watch it uh and like say hello to him afterwards without vomiting and passing out or or all of this gear exposure is going to make it so much worse. Like we're just <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go exactly the other way. Like we're going to we're going to get well, sick during the play. And just we're going right to find out. out. We're, we're going gonna to find, find out because we did out. it. That means we've been doing gear can get it for like almost a year. Almost a year. <laughs> oh my god! Wow! Holy shit! That's a that's a um a benchmark. Absolutely. So yeah, it is. So we will be at. Uh, Stratfest for a little over a week. So it will, we will probably not have, I'm not going to be editing this shit in Stratford. I'm going to be honest with you guys. No. I, I'm on my fucking vacation um, trying to see the results of this year long experiment into gear exposure. So we yes. will, we will see how successful that is. If we um, record again, it means we survived. If you never hear from us, it means the black hit was fatal this time. <laughs> <laughs> it was permanent. <laughs> we did actual brain damage. So um, if you never hear from us again, th- thank you people who listened. Thank you, Dan. Yes. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Allie. Um, thank you, and Maria. Maria. Yeah. Thank you, uh, people who have listened and commented and uh, sent us messages. I hope to continue doing this because there are so many gear properties that we have not we have not yet tackled the mountain of of gear's uh, performances. But you know, it, the brain damage could be could be permanent this time. So we'll just we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But there's a list of all of the all of the gear properties on our Instagram, which is uh, at gear can get it surprisingly. So you know, if you want to climb that mountain yourselves, feel feel free to continue our our work. So maybe until next time. So maybe, Possibly. yeah, you'll have to <laughs> stay stay tuned for, to see how much brain damage <laughs> is inflicted. <laughs> um, and for the special Stratfest episode, which we will obviously, obviously. record, obviously. Yeah. So on that note, friends. <laughs>